Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> it's Hello. lovely to, to see you all and um, a very happy Friday. We're a little bit closer to our weekend, I think, than, uh, than some of you, but it's not, uh, not too far away, which is, which is good. Super. Okay. Well, we will um, let's uh, let's get get going, and um, I'm sure people we can uh, we can catch people people up. Um, so, first of all, I'm going to share my screen. My cool. screen with you. So a very warm welcome to our uh, second tea and and training. Um, and, uh, Lisa, could you mute everybody, please? Yeah. I accidentally muted you. <laughs> okay. Okay, apologies. Um, so a very warm welcome and uh, today we are going to take a lovely visit uh, to High Clear Castle. We were lucky enough to do some rather lovely filming there back in, in January. So we have some, um, some rather lovely uh, video footage. And um, as with um, our visit to Blenheim, this is all about you and we want you to really have a fabulous understanding and a feel for what your clients will um, uh, will experience and understand when they want to plan a visit to to High Clear. There's lots to see and do, so we want to uh, share share the very best bits with you. And because it is all about you, we really would love you to um, to ask as many questions as as you have. Um, chances are somebody else is thinking the same question if I haven't communicated quite clearly enough. Um, so please use the chat box down the side or wave madly at us um, and we'll allow, um, we've got time for uh, Q&A at, um, at the end of the session. So we will make sure that all your questions are, um, are answered. Um, as before, we are recording the session and we will send you um, all of the information and the recordings and the video clips that we'll share with you a little bit later. So you are fully armed and equipped to, um, to share it all with, with your clients. And today, my cup of tea of choice is, is Earl Grey. So I hope you have your, um, your favourite tea to keep you going while we, while we, go, um, while we go through this. So just a, a brief um, reminder or, or introduction for some of you to Humphreys of Henley. I'm very proud that we are the only uh, specialist in the British countryside. Um, the whole team live, eat, work and breathe and sleep uh, the, the countryside. We love exploring and finding new places and old places to, to share with you. And it's because we've spent so much time um, in, in the area that we can give you that, that privileged access. We can introduce you to um, uh, the Lord of the Manor or um, the, the local expert. And we will create for you the best itineraries because um, we know how to make the best use of the time, whether it's a, a, a quick two day visit um, through to a 12 or 14 day itinerary. Every detail will be um, explored, discussed and, and managed so that your clients have the best possible visit. So let's get into, into Highclear. Many, uh, many of us refer to Highclear as Downton um, and uh, I think that will probably continue for, for quite some time. But this is one of the most iconic images, I think, uh, for any Downton fan. It's, uh, it's the one that we all see at the beginning of, um, uh, of the series. But going back to a little bit of, um, a little bit of the story of Highclere Castle, um, the site itself has been um, uh, around and, and part of an estate for um, many hundreds of years. The bishops of Winchester uh, controlled all of the estate, the buildings and farmland and so on for about 800 years before Edward VI in the mid uh, 16th century as part of uh, the, the reformation that was taking place 
confiscated all of their lands, so they no longer um, uh, had control. And then for a couple of hundred years, the ownership um, went between a number of families until in uh, the mid 1700s, uh, Henry Herbert bought it and um, he was subsequently to become the first Earl of Carnarvon in uh, the 1790s. Um, he was a very prominent politician of the time and uh, rose to become master of the house for, um, for a while and was one of George III's favourites, um, uh, hence becoming, uh, becoming an Earl. And George III um, was uh, quite an interesting one. He, when he became king, uh, he was king of Great Britain and he was king of Ireland, which were two very separate kingdoms. But on the 1st of January, my birthday, on the 1st of January 1801, um, the two kingdoms were joined and he was the first king of both Great Britain and, and Ireland. So a little, bit of, um, a little bit of history. So ever since um, Henry became Earl in... Um, 1798, um, the uh, Carnarvon family have, have lived at, at Highclere. And it was the first Earl in the late 1700s, um, along with um, the uh, Blenheim that we talked about on, on Wednesday, who employed the services of the magnificent Lancelot Capability Brown. And you can see the original plans of the gardens um, in uh, one of Lady Carnarvon's blogs, and there's a, a, a fabulous framed picture of it in the castle. And they were really quite ornate. So the early 1700s version, they were, they were quite sort of almost fussy. But Capability Brown came in and swept all of that away. And um, he reportedly um, got rid of about six of the follies in the land because he said that it interrupted the view. Um, and as was his, his, his genius, um, created this amazing um, set of, of, of this amazing rolling parkland that, that we can see today. He makes it look like it was completely natural, but it wasn't. It was, uh, it was all designed. And the third Earl of Carnarvon was the main one responsible for the amazing castle that we see today. In 1838, he commissioned Sir Charles Barry uh, to build or design and build a, um, a magnificent castle that was befitting his, his role in society. Now, Charles Barry was quite an interesting one because he had, quite surprisingly, won a competition to design the new uh, Houses of Parliament. So if you visit um, the Palace of Westminster in London and then uh, do the short journey out to Highclere, you might just see a few similarities because it was uh, uh, Charles Barry who was responsible for both. And it was quite extraordinary that he was commissioned in 1838 and the last of the interior designs were not completed until 1878. So there were 40 odd years worth of, um, of building. But I think we've got to be jolly grateful to them for that actually because it's ended up being the utterly beautiful place that it is, um, it is today that we can go and visit and, and enjoy. Now Disraeli, who was um, our, one of our prime ministers four times amazingly in the 1860s, 70s and 80s, um, he was reported to have said the first time he made a trip to Highclere, as he turned the corner and saw this amazing building in front of him, He's reported to have said, how scenical, how scenical, um, which I don't think is actually a word, but it does sum up the impact that Highclere has on, on first sight. And the Earl of Car Carnarvon in those days was certainly at the real center of, of social and political life. And every political leader from Balfour and, and so on, they all visited, um, uh, uh, visited Highclere for some fabulous weekends and it's probably a good job that there was no social media around at that time because they might have been caught out talking about things that they that they shouldn't but that whole Victorian uh, era was was really being played out at, at Highclere and you really wanted to be on that party list for the weekend because uh, everybody who was anybody was was going to be there. And another significant part of its history was um, 
uh, during the First World War when the incredible fifth countess, Almina, turned the house temporarily into a hospital for the returning soldiers from, um, from the front. Now, Almina sounds like she was quite a formidable character, and uh, I don't think very many people actually argued with her. Um, she ran an incredibly efficient hospital um, and is reported to have saved the lives of, of many of our returning soldiers. So uh, full marks to her for that. And the fabulous drawing room, uh, which you'll see um, in, in one of the videos with all of the fabulous green silk wall hangings, that apparently was one of Almina's contributions. So she was quite a character and the current Lady Carnarvon has written a book about her. So if you're interested in that period of history, it's, uh, it's certainly well worth, well worth a read. Now, Downton Abbey, not everyone is a fan. High Clare is magnificent enough in its own right, but um, Julian Fellows apparently is a great friend of the Carnarvons and has spent quite a bit of time at High Clare. And that's what gave him the idea that uh, Highclere should play such a starring role in, in the series that was to become Downton Abbey. They did apparently spend about a year or so touring the country, looking at other possible locations, but ended up coming back to, to Highclere. And that's, that's where it all began, which is, is just wonderful. Now they are pretty accurate historically in Downton. But um, the one, one of their um, intentional inaccuracies is the bells. Um, and if you've seen it, you'll, you'll remember there's a, a, a box on the wall with all of the names of the different rooms. And when uh, Lord Grantham rang from the, the drawing room to summon his, his cup of tea or, or glass of whiskey, a light would, would come up in the... Um, uh, in this box. So Carson the butler knew where to go to and where he had to deliver the, uh, the cup of tea to. Um, now, in actual fact, in the 1920s, though that system of bells um, was, um, uh, had been made extinct by a more modern version and a rather more user-friendly version, but visually it's fabulous. So they decided to um, stick with it and you can still see it in the castle, in the castle today. The other difference that you will see and, and your clients will see when they visit is um, Highclere actually has some rather lovely modern kitchens. So those old kitchens that you see downstairs um, in Downton um, are created, um, created in a studio. But uh, what is down in the basement is the other uh, reason for um, Highclere's fame, which is from the, the fifth Earl and his um, discovery with of um, Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922, and uh, I mean he he they obviously did extensive exploring, um, and he became a real expert. And there's the most fabulous exhibition down in the in the basement. So when you visit the castle, um, you're able to go and explore all that they found from uh, Tutankhamun's tomb, and it's it's. Well worth, well worth a visit, but you won't get a cup of tea down there because there are no, no kitchens at all. So here are just some of, uh, some of the images. Um, you'll probably recognize on the top right, the beautiful library, and it's even more stunning in the flesh with all those amazing books um, and the beautiful great hall down there on, um, on the bottom, bottom left. And the grounds are amazing. Here's one of the remaining follies that I mentioned earlier. This is Jackdaw's Castle that you can see on the, on the bottom right there, which um, you can see from the windows of the library. And it really is quite, quite beautiful. And on the top right is uh, what's affectionately known as Lady Mary's Bench. Now we did try and find out what had happened to make it known as Lady Mary's Bench, whether she had a marriage proposal or some significant piece of news, but we couldn't find out. So that's, that's one to look for. But either way, I mean, you can imagine sitting there and looking out across that view. It really is quite, um, quite, quite spectacular. Um, so for your um, uh, visit to the castle um, and, and for your client's visit to the castle, there are a number of different ways that, um, that we can create this for you. 
Um, Lord and Lady Carnarvon are incredibly creative in all of the, the events that they put on through the year. They had um, arranged a really fantastic celebration of VE Day uh, next month, which obviously now sadly has had to be cancelled. But throughout the spring, summer and into Christmas, they, they really do put on some, some wonderful events. Um, both including the grounds and some some slightly more intimate visits to um, to the castle. Now we um, we sell out incredibly quickly. Um, no great surprise. Sometimes we we have a great relationship with Highclere, and we can um, we will always try our best to secure tickets if possible. But um, it's always good to have as much notice as as possible. But the main opening times are sort of this time of year around Easter and then through from July through to September and then again over over Christmas. But um, we can um, usually help out. So please do do ask. One of our guests favourite ways of um, visiting Highclere is, is to have a private tour. And um, they've told, some guests have told us that they felt like Lord and Lady of the Manor um, as they were greeted by the butler at the front door upon arrival um, and then guided through all of the incredible state rooms with a real expert guide who um, shared all the stories and the, the secrets and the history and, and so on. And then uh, they'd enjoy um, coffee and pastries or a glass of champagne, depending on the, on the time of day. And um, the Ellen Countess are, are usually very generous with their time. Um, and if they are in residence and are able to, um, they're usually more than happy to go and greet, um, greet the guests doing the private tour. So that's, that's really, really very special. And Cogs Manor and Bampton are just about 45 minutes away. Um, and that's where they do a lot of the um, external location filming. So you'll recognize the pub and the shop um, Cogs Manor was the farm where um, one of the Ill illegitimate children um, was uh, was housed and so on. So um, there's all sorts of um, fabulous locations that, um, that, that you can see. And um, being just 45 minutes away, it's quite easy to, to combine the two. And we'll show you um, in a bit an, a, a, an idea of a, um, an itinerary that we can, that we can create. Um, Location-wise, Highclere is absolutely spot on. It's um, about an hour, just over an hour or so west of London, um, north north of Hampshire, very close to Heckfield. If you're uh, if you've got clients who fancy a stay there, which really is um, a rather lovely hotel, um, and just going westwards, it's um, an hour or so to Stonehenge and Bath and so on. Northwest up into the Cotswolds. Um, Again, sort of an hour, um, an hour or so to Oxford. So it's really centrally located um, for hotels or areas of the Cotswolds or to pop back into, um, into London if that's what, um, what your clients would like to do. So um, there's, a, there's a great way of making best use of, um, of, of the time when, uh, when they visit. Now here is some of our footage when we uh, were very kindly hosted by Lady Carnarvon in uh, in January, and um, please do visit the website. We've got um, the footage with with sound um, of all that she shared with us uh, during uh, during the tour, and it was it was wonderful. She is so passionate about her home easy to understand why. Um, and uh, she loves researching all of the history about their ancestors and, and so on. It, it was beautiful and it's even better in the flesh, dare I say. Sorry. Now this is um, Lord Grantham's uh, walk that he does at the beginning of each um, each episode, and I should have had my golden retriever with me really uh, when when I did that. Um, but the grounds are just stunning, and and I'm no expert on trees, but those cedar trees in the parkland are are really beautiful. The gardeners do a phenomenal job, and from every aspect, um, the castle is is really beautiful. From that side, you can see out 
to one of the other remaining follies, which is um, Heaven's Gate, which is uh, rather lovely too. So um, just to give you an idea, and um, as we said on Wednesday, that none of this is set in stone, but to give you an idea of timings um, for a day, um, if your clients are Downton fans and want to go to Cogs Manor and, and Bampton and so on, a nice early start will get them there to be greeted at, um, at 8.30 and they can have a, a wonderful private tour um, with the, uh, the head of the trustees um, who is so incredibly knowledgeable and Cogs Manor is beautiful in its own right. It's a, a 13th century, um, absolutely stunning, stunning building. And then you can, uh, we can offer a lovely lunch at uh, the Carnarvon Arms in the village of Highclere or something, something similar before um, either a private tour in the afternoon um, or if it's on one of their public opening days, we can book an afternoon stop so, um, uh, so they can have a, a lovely wander around the castle and the grounds. There's a sweet little cafe that serves rather good cakes and and obviously a good cup of tea, um, so they can um, they can enjoy that at, at the end of their visit. So just to give you an idea, but if for a real Downton fan, we'd certainly recommend a whole day. Um, there's there's certainly plenty to see and and enjoy um, all the way all the way through. And again, this is an idea of pricing. It's um, it's based on. Um, uh, three different um, three different levels of, of depending what um, what your clients would like to do um, anything from um, the uh, visit to um, to the castle um, through to the, the ultimate private tour um, followed by a three course lunch or, or dinner and you would your clients would have that dinner or lunch in the private dining room where there's a rather magnificent Van Dyke painting um, that hangs at the, at the end of the dining table. So it's, um, it's rather magnificent. And as I say, these, um, these prices are um, uh, uh, just to give you a, a ballpark, but um, we will happily, happily explore them with you. So please do visit um, the website um, and have a look at, uh, at the other footage for um, some more images of the outside and, and inside of, of Highclere. But um, as I say, we will we can create a, a magical itinerary um, all around um, around a visit. So um, uh, we look forward to creating something rather special for um, for your clients. And um, now we would like to answer your questions, please. So um, please do let us know. I think somebody started to say something. Lisa, can you see anything in the chat? Oh, you're muted. Yeah, there is one message in the chat at the moment. Um, could you tell us a bit more information about the Tutankhamun exhibition? Ah, yes. Um, there are... Um, ...beautifully curated um, small exhibitions because it does um, take you through everything that they discovered um, back in the, amazingly, a um, hundred years ago now. Um, and they, um, it's all the way through from um, the smaller artifacts through to the full, um, I'm sure there's a technical term and apologies, <laughs> I need to go and investigate what it is, but the, the, the burial um, um, image and mask that, um, that is, is so familiar. And, um, and the, Saatchi Gallery are doing a virtual, because um, they had an amazing um, exhibition um, that was running and they're now apparently doing it, doing it virtually. Um, so you'll be able to see some of the, um, the, the real artifacts um, through the video at the, at the Saatchi Gallery. Um, but the one at the, in, in Blenheim sort of takes, takes you through and it really um, explains so much about life back then. 
um, and and what Tutankhamun would have have gone through and and so on. So it's um, it's it's fascinating, really fascinating. Apologies, they weren't allowed to film down there, but it's it's worth going to see. Is there anything else that? We've had um, another question about how do the gardens compare to Blenheim? Ah, oh. um, there are some um, similarities, certainly from the, the parkland um, with um, the, the sort of sweeping trees and, and so on. But it is less, um, it's less uh, manicured, I think, than, um, than Blenheim. As you, as you will have seen from the pictures before and these ones today, um, whereas Blenheim is surrounded by some rather stunning Italian gardens and, and beautifully manicured um, hedge, hedges and, and so on. Um, Highclere is, is far freer um, and, and doesn't have that, um, uh, that, that sort of design to it, if, if you like. But one of the fabulous additions, um, and it was it's in one of the images earlier in the presentation um, that Lady Lord and Lady Carnarvon have, have introduced, is this fabulous wild um, wildflower meadow, and it's tragic that no one can see it at this time of year because it is so beautiful. And as with um, all of these these kinds of, of, of meadows, it just gets better year year on year. And the, because it is, Highclere is a working farm as well. So um, the dogs and the horses and the animals are, are far more in, um, are far more are obvious than, um, than at Blenheim um, because it's, um, it's, it's noticeably um, smaller, um, but it is, it is a working farm, which is, is just lovely actually. And they're, in, they're doing one of their big renovation projects at the moment with one of the major barns um, I'm not sure what it's going to be used for, but um, they they really are, they're investing all of the money that um, Downton has brought them to renovating um, this, this beautiful castle and its grounds, which is, is wonderful for all of us. I hope that answers. Is there anything else that I can answer? Um, Brian had a great discovery. Um, apparently, there is a um, Lady Carnarvon is hosting a virtual cocktail evening this evening. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> and I, are you going, Brian? Are you going to join join them? Yes, I'm. I'm definitely going to get all dressed up. <laughs> fantastic! Oh, that's that's brilliant. They are they are brilliant at, at coming up with with things uh, with things like that. So oh well, can you um, can you feed back to us and let us know how, how it was? I will do. Wonderful, because they also produce um, high clear gin. Um, so if you can get a hold of a bottle of high clear gin, then you'll really feel part of the uh, part of the family when, when you join them. <laughs> So is there anything else that we can we can answer or have we kind of, I mean obviously if there's anything that you think of afterwards then um, please do just um, please do just let us know. So um, a huge thank you and I would like to now make an introduction to you of um, Lord Morris Fomoy who will be um, co-hosting with me on Monday. Um, Morris, uh, well, I will, I will let Morris do um, an introduction. He did give me a bit of a surprise when we talked earlier on Zoom. He didn't have a moustache last time I, I saw him, but um, that's uh, apparently appeared during lockdown. So, um, Morris, if you'd like to just um, say a little bit about what we're going to talk about on Monday. Yes, um, thank you, Sam. I hope everyone can hear me. Um, I, you'll see my moustache on Monday, which is, which is being grown during lockdown. But most importantly, on Monday, we're going to talk about a really exciting uh, uh, itinerary of going to Kensington Palace and then going down to Horse Guards to watch his secret 
uh, unknown parade called the Four O'Clock uh, Parade. It's a punishment parade. Uh, I'll explain more on Monday. I think you'll find it very interesting. It's a punishment parade that lasted 100 years, and very few people know it's there. Um, I talk about that because I was in the Household Cavalry, I was in the Blues and Rolls, um, same regiment as uh, Prince Harry, Prince William. Um, before that, uh, we talk a lot about Kensington Palace with its connections to the royal family. Uh, obviously, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge lived there. Uh, Diana, Princess of Wales, lived there. Um, Queen Victoria was brought up there. And going back in history, it was the uh, official palace before Buckingham Palace was built for William and Mary, King George I, King George II, Queen Anne. Um, and it's a trip involving two distinct places. But it's not only that, because we talk about uh, the British aristocracy, primogenitor, uh, dollar princesses, the women who came over from America who uh, financed, refinanced the, America, uh, the British aristocracy, uh, royal weddings that I've been to, royal funerals that I've been to, and the such like. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Morris, very much. So, um, uh, just, oh, and on Wednesday, just to prepare your diaries, um, we are going to explore all the fabulous things that you can do in uh, Windsor. Um, everything from the castle and river cruising and glorious carriage riding through Windsor Great Park. So uh, we really look forward to seeing you on Monday, um, talking about Kensington Palace and, um, and Horse Guards, and then hopefully again on Wednesday for um, our trip to Windsor. So I just wish you a really happy, safe and healthy weekend. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you so much. And please do let us know if you've got any more questions. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.